So, hi and welcome. This is a very sped up version. These are my acrylic gouaches, all from Turner. The top row is a Japanese version, and <laughs> it turned out they're all pretty much convenient colors. They're different pigments mixed with white, and some of them also with a little bit of black. Um, I could have mixed them myself, but hey, now I got them. The middle ones are some I, uh, some open stock ones I bought on the side, and the bottom ones are little tubes that I bought in a in a pallet box. I'll pull that out in a little bit, where I got eleven colors and a big tube of white, and some brushes and a cloth, a ruler and a palette cleaner. There's the palette that those little one came in. Fit in like that. The white came on its own. It's kind of nifty. The palette cleaner actually works very well but I can't get any more of that because it's not sold anywhere in Europe. You can get it if you live in the States and it's really good. So this is a save my sketchbook and this is the one where I painted the first many pages black because I had I had used it for some swatches instead of using it for something sensible. So I got black pages to fill and I thought these might be opaque enough to go in there. And um, so yeah, uh, let's try and paint something once I am done pointing and touching. Come on, move it out of the way. We need to paint. Yeah, I'm still talking about something. Well, while I'm getting ready, I um, I can tell you that I was inspired by my friend Aurora. I'll link to her video channel in the description. Oh, we need a palette. A little white one. Uh, and, and she did some gouache on a painted page acrylic painted page and I fell inspired by her video and the funny thing is her video was inspired by Myra Byler I hope I said that right and a very large youtuber and um, so um, so yeah I felt like yeah I could go and and paint something on one of my acrylic painted pages so that's how inspiration sometimes travels from one person to another. I got a... For this painting, I got a reference photo of a Cala flower. And I'm here picking out some colors that I think would be... Would be good for that. And, um, yeah, we got a brush, some water, and here we go. Uh, for starters, I had no idea if the paints would be opaque enough to cover that black. Uh, they were not quite. It's kind of starting out here, mixing some pink and some permanent red. There's some white in that pink, because it's one of those Japanese colors. But um, as you will see, it does not quite cover the black keeps on shining through but um, especially the more I use the permanent red on its own it, it really doesn't cover well so and the bottom of the flower is paler than the top so here I'm mixing in some white and that covers a lot better and yeah, it has to be ugly before it gets pretty, so bear with me. We have to go through quite a few layers before it starts to look like anything much. So, and that brush there is way too soft and I'm way too quick, so I keep on flipping little streaks of paint outside my painting area. And it's not very easy to, to just wipe it off. Now, the acrylic uh, gouache paints, they feel pretty much like using acrylics. And they will dry on your palette like acrylics. And 
and they're a little thick but they dry up like gouache they go completely matte and has a slightly rough surface when when they dry uh, that you will see on yeah and here I decided that I have seen a trick uh, with somebody else I think it was lacquery art who had some was painting something on a dark background where her the color she was gonna use wouldn't cover the dark so she painted it white first and then the color on top so well it's not quite white but there's a lot of white in the mixture so I'm painting the whole thing kind of white now and let that dry and then I'm gonna try and paint the red on top that's why it looks like it does right now I'm trying to control that brush set but I keep flipping outside you can't see it because of the distance I filmed it at but I could and it was really annoying so thinking washing let's paint some leaves Look, one olive green, and I want them the leaves to sort of mix in a little bit with the background. So here comes a dark blue. I'm gonna mix in with it. Yeah, that was a little crust from the tube. Here we go, mixing, mixing. I'm not mixing it too well because I kind of like how how acrylics and gouache you can kind of not quite mix it and get a streaky look that's probably not the right term for it but that's how it looks you get kind of a mixture of the colors streaking together and the olive green is the one that covers the black the best I'm waiting for the the pink white in the middle there to to dry while I do the some leaves and yeah it's not super uh, realistic this painting today but I'm just trying to play around and and get used to to acrylics I want to do more acrylics but um, I'm not very good with thick paint it streaks and makes funny things and yeah I have to learn to control my brush strokes better so let's do the job do the stem here and hope for things to to dry up nicely Let's make it on a leaf. Looking at this now, it looks better than it did when I painted it. The problem about filming painting like this is that it's my book is placed flat on my desk, giving me a really poor angle of, of, of vision. And um, for this, I could pretty much, at times, almost only see the glare of the paint. And uh, I had to double check with a, <laughs> with my screen to see what I was actually painting. Um, I haven't really figured out yet. Yeah, and here I got a spray bottle because the paint is drying on the palette. And I got that for free because the I got it wrong they sent me two spray bottles instead of the palette I just showed from Caran uh, because of a mix up at Amazon so I didn't pay for them the seller was kind enough to let me keep them so here we go try to put that red on top of the pink 
and that works out way better than just putting it straight on the black. I am messing around mixing colors and trying to do something fancy here and let me tell you it won't work all that well because that white at the bottom even though it looked dry it wasn't so it kept on mixing up in the in the the red I was trying to to use so that's why it looks kind of keep on looking pink in the middle but it's nothing a hair dryer can't take care of it's coming out uh, you won't see it I uh, pause the camera while I dry it but let me add some more stuff there trying to make a ah. that flower just gets fatter and fatter the more I go over the lines there trying to blend it and make a shadow up under there and it just won't work yet we'll get there there's some blue and that was an accident because I was running out of white so I grabbed a tube I thought was white but it was the dark blue I had used for the leaves it will come in to play later yeah because the bottom there is supposed to be lighter than the top and that brush is just wrong for that it's uh, it's super soft and a little too broad for what I'm doing eventually I'll change it I think I'm looking for something now yep there we go a smaller brush with more springy bristles now we're talking from now on things go a lot easier using the right brushes key and you can see the green is starting to run into my my reds and I'm starting to mix up some shadow colors with that eventually cleaning up the edges I should just have started with that brush. It was so much better. I'm trying to even things out. At this distant distance, you can't really see how streaky things are. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to to get that shadow in there. Uh, it just won't work. So I'm. Um, just working it into the the base a bit more. That's the beauty of this. You can just paint over if you don't like what you did. I'm trying to zoom in so you can see how streaky things are. Especially the leaves. But I left them like that because it wasn't meant to be a super detailed project anyways I'm just practicing using this paint and keep trying working on that top there to get it some dimension just trying things out trying to make some oops and that blue was just uh, uh, I forgot that it was based on a thalo blue and it just takes over so bad. Thalo blue is, is it's a great pigment, it's not too expensive but gosh it just kills everything to try and mix it with. I had to get some more red out. And I'm just, put I put that uh, big bluish purple blob there and what I'm going to do is gonna leave it to dry and then I'm gonna glaze over it uh, to to make it blend better with the rest now the beauty of this uh, gouache and other brushes and acrylics is that you can paint right up to wet paint with it I'm not used to that if I did 
any such thing with watercolor, the whole thing would just run together. But, um, there gotta be some benefits to using something else sometimes. Yeah, try that shadow again. Won't work. Won't work. Yeah. Well, keep. Why am I keeping painting? Oh, well, eventually I, I get it. Takes my brain a little while to get in gear. Figure out what I'm doing. But it helped changing the, the brush. I'm trying to figure out how to blend things. Yeah, and the jump cuts there, that's when I pause the camera to to get the hair dry out and dry stuff. And now I'm glazing over with the red on top of that dark blue purple. And that actually came out quite okay. I'm trying to hold up the page a little bit so it doesn't glare too bad and for myself and for the camera. So you can better see what I'm actually doing. Just keep on adding to it until it is how it, you want it. Clean up those edges. Starting to look better. Getting a little more dimension. Mixing a little bit of that shadow to color to, to even out. There was a bit of a harsh edge there. Still one a little darker down there. No idea why. I did that hand move. So try to get that side of the pedal a little broader, but mm, yeah. And that shadow won't work either. Hmm, what to do? Try and pick it up. The blue there that I put on was, was very watery, so I could pick it up with a dry brush. Dried it again. I take my paint away while I use the air dry hair dryer. Again, here's the white trick again because I want that petal different. And the dark red is quite transparent, so I I need a base for that. I use that white trick again, except this time I haven't mixed it in with a lot of pink. Cleaning up that shape. That's better. I really like that about acrylics, this painting over stuff. Working a little bit on that base again. While I wait for the white to dry, the white I used straight out of the tube so there's not too much water in there. So it should dry up fairly quickly. And there comes the shadow that works. It was a very watery solution. And it will look even better once I finish that red on top there. Uh, 
blends out a little bit with the, the red, but that's okay because it gives me a highlight that I didn't have before. Not much, but just a little bit. I am so sorry for all the glares. I <laughs> there. So, and this is where I should pretty much probably almost just have left it, but no. I decided I wanted leaves in the background. Oh, and I guess far worse than that. I'm trying. And I'm painting them dark because I kind of just wanted to hint at them at the background. But it gets weirder and weirder the more I try. Why did I paint up there? Don't ask me. They don't add to the value of the picture, it just makes it look weird. And there I had some green on my brush, or put it on there, I see. So it gets a weird streak up there. Yeah. There's only one thing to do. Takes me a little while to realize it though. Trying hard. Come on. Yeah. No. No. Terrible. So we paint it all over with a dark blue that is almost black. And here is the lesson. Don't pull paint across and because all your paint strokes show so this does not improve on my picture. Uh, the I get rid of some of the glare from the other acrylic that I did the background with, but when this dries, it shows my brush strokes so bad, and it really doesn't look good. But hey. Is live and learn, and I need to practice so much more with a, some kind of acrylic paints. Okay, that w down there kind of worked because I worked my s strokes kind of in the right direction, but the top is a crisscross, and it shows so bad when it dries. So that's what I'm going to take away from this. It is mind your bright brush strokes. Yeah. I guess if I kept on painting, I could correct that with enough layers. And there it is. That's how it looks when it's dry. Um, I'm fairly pleased with it. It was an hour painting and yeah, those brush strokes looks terrible. But it was a sketch project and this is how things go sometimes. You can't win them all. And when you do... Oops, there's the top of my face. Because I was reaching for my Posca pen. Sorry for the headshot. Signed and done. Thank you all for watching. Please come back another time. Like and subscribe please. Take care. Bye bye.